Hello, everyone. I'm Hawk McKinnon. I'm with FPTM Fire Photography, something I started back in 1983. And after listening to several of the podcasts and following some of the podcasts, this is not a podcast. This is just a crazy idea because in the fire podcast that I've been listening to, they talk about fire buffs and fire ground photographers. Well, today we have Matthew Weinberg, a fire rescue video. Uh, we known each other eh, since about 2013, 2014, out here in Las Vegas uh, when I was doing fire photography for the Clark County Fire Department under Chief Washington. And I met him at a couple of the open houses because I was doing an outreach program. So, hey, Matt, thanks for um, joining me in this crazy idea. Um, introduce yourself and um, tell us a little bit about yourself before I start asking questions. All righty. So I'm Matthew Weinberg. I've been involved with fire photography since around 2010, 2011. Uh, I have lived pretty much everywhere, honestly, even in Kentucky, Nevada, uh, Massachusetts. Now I'm actually in front of my, uh, my firehouse here in uh, Bloomington, Indiana. So I've been everywhere. Um, essentially, what I do is I get response videos and then if any uh, any major incident drops in the city or in the area, obviously I'll head out there and get some photos and video for uh, the incidents as well. So that's essentially what I do, and that's my role. Okay. Now, you said you're at your house in Bloomington, um, Indiana. Now, are you with a department, or are you just freelancing from one station to another? More or less, I just freelance from one station to another. I'm not necessarily on any department, so I just freelance and get a lot of stuff. So, freelancing essentially is what I do. Oh, okay. Well, let's start off with this. How will you consider yourself a fire buff or a fire ground photographer? I'm more of a buff. I do have a camera that I will use on occasion, but most often I'll be, I, I use my phone. Essentially, so I use my iPhone. Um, I'm still kind of adapting techniques as far as, you know, getting good photos and video. I, I'm, I may call myself a, a photographer in that aspect in the sense that I'm always, you know, trying to find a good way to get the uh, pictures and video. But as far as professional shooting, no, I don't really do that. I just use my, my phone. So I have the camera, any massive incident drops, but I uh, usually use my iPhone. And <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely more of a buff than anything else. No, okay. Yeah, it, at least it is a start. Now, when you do any of your videos or photos, um, notice um, through your channel, which we'll get to that at, towards the end of the interview where people can reach you and see some of your work. Have you taken any fire action or just the, the equipment um rolling in, rolling out, and going down the street, more of the apparatuses than the uh, actual activities? So I started out doing, um, you know, just the trucks and all of that. Within the last couple of years, actually, no, more like the last year, actually, I've been doing uh, more, like, on-scene stuff. Um, but that's only been going on for, like, a little a little over a year, so it hasn't been that long since I've been doing on-scene stuff, though, but. Oh, okay. Now, how long have you been doing the fire buffing? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, pro like, literal buffing, probably since around 2009, 2010. I started the videos in, like, 2011. Uh, but I think what, I, honestly, I think what happened is you know, every little boy at some point, you know, has that fire truck fascination in them. And I guess I just never grew out of it, honestly. I think that's pretty much what happened. Oh, there's nothing wrong with not growing out of it. Uh, from some of the uh, podcasts right. that I listened to, a lot of the firefighters started off as buff. Uh, one recently that I was listening to, 
which uh, surprised me. Um, basically, as the individual stated, he was fire buffing while he was in his mom belly. <laughs> so, you, you know, so uh, right. that was a very interesting podcast. So you've been doing it since about 2009. I know we met at one of the um, firehouse uh, open open house activities. Uh, yeah, first one was 2013 over at Station 33. So that was my first one. Then I ended up at 14, I think was the last one I did. Uh, was at 14. So not too far from each other, actually. Okay, for 14, what's your last open house before you move out of the area? Right. Okay. Yeah, I, I know it's been a while back. I know um, the department has the, uh, the CDs or, or those photos that I have taken and so forth. I know you've been in some of those photos. Now, oh, of course. There, there is one thing that I've always been curious to find out. Okay. How do you knew what apparatus were going before anybody did? <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I had kept, at one point, I had kept bugging and bugging and bugging uh, Chief Castle over uh, get us getting Pulse Point because City of Las Vegas had, had that already. We got that right before the open house of 28. And then before that, and still even after Pulse Point, because, you know, Pulse Point's glitched, you know, it can be glitched and all that. We have it here. It doesn't work worth a damn anyway. <laughs> um, but before that, I would spend a good chunk of my time uh, hooked up, pretty much hooked up to the uh, computer and the trucks. It, it would display the calls before they even went out. So you'd see what, what the, call, the call type was. The location and based on the location i'll be like okay that's kind of near here or you know no it's not and then once it went up into the active column that that's when we get the tone so i know kind of in advance because with the open houses that would depend on you know, who's in service usually we had either a rescue in service or a rescue from another station would come cover but the engine was the engine was always out of service though so uh it would always be a rescue company going on on whatever call it was so Basically, just hooked up to the computer and look at the calls, man. Basically, okay, yeah, but I know for a while there you weren't living too far from Station 25. Yeah, I was at a mile 25. Hang on, hang on a second. This big truck's going, this big truck's going by me. It's gonna be louder, but yeah, so I was at a mile for 25. So, um so I was out there every once in a while. Um, I actually walked to the open house there. I actually walked to that one, so that was pretty easy. Um, so, yeah, I lived in 25's area. Then before that, I was over uh, in 82's in Henderson. I was in the area for a while before moving, so. No, okay. Yeah, I know you said you started as a kid and everything. Do you remember... What was the very first thing that got you hooked into it or made you think about becoming fire buff? Honestly, I don't really. I think, like I said, I think it was just one of those things, you know, as a kid, you just you have that interest in you know, I just never got out of it. I think that's pretty much what it was. I don't think there was actually something that, you know, drug me to it. Um, one of those things. No, nobody in your family is in the fire service or a first responder. Right, no. Um, my mom, however, thinks it might be hereditary because her mom was into that stuff. My my grandmother on my mom's side was totally into that. So that's, she thinks it's hereditary, honestly. Hey, they, I mean, the science field blame everything. Oh, yeah, you got a gene for this. You got a gene for that. Hey. Let's just add that one in there. Just a gene for um, fire buffing. And right, and we see it too as well hundred. because a lot of a lot of departments, you know, you see that. You even see, I mean, in Gloucester, there's a bunch of the guys, especially in Gloucester, you know, there's a bunch of the guys that their, um, you know, their fathers are on the department and now they're working together or, you know, whatever. We have, I think, a grandfather, a father, 
and a son that are all on right now, I think. So, yeah, it, it's definitely a genetic. Yeah. Well, I do know um, I met one um, firefighter. Um, actually, I've had the privilege of having him um, under my command when he was a volunteer. And he from the East Coast. And he was telling me that everybody in his family uh, been in the fire service. And right. it's actually the first paid firefighter in the family while everybody else was volunteer. So oh, wow. that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah uh, unlike um, your story about, you know, as a small kid, kind of enjoyed it, kind of got hooked with it, stayed with it, and most other. I was the opposite. I was a law enforcement. And I even even went through an academy. Even though a couple of my, well, two of my best friends got me in with the Los Angeles County Fire Explorer program. That didn't last too long, but the photographer, I was already doing photography thanks to my dad. And that just kind of kicked off um, in 1983, the photography aspect. I went law enforcement, and who would have thought that now I'm a volunteer firefighter with Clark County, right? Uh, which is their rural division, Clark County being a combination department, and I'm doing suppression. Who would have thought I was going to be having so much fun? I mean, so right. much that uh, I even designed my own tattoo. Go figure that one out. So... Yeah, so, okay. Do you remember your first incident um, that you responded to? God. (laughs) I've done so much. Um, But like I said, I've only been actually, like, you know, videotaping and all that with the calls for about a year now. But I don't remember the first, like the first, but I know the biggest one I had was actually about a year ago when, when I was in Massachusetts. Um, that city, for whatever reason, was like, it, it was, it tended to be like kind of prone to virus. So I'd actually train myself to wake up like, you know, once every hour, check my phone. And what, uh, March 18th of last year, had a, uh, around 4 a.m., woke up and checked, and we were already at a second alarm. And I was like, well, okay, I guess I'm taking this in. There's a second alarm uh, about four in the morning. And I'm thinking, I don't know how old this notification is. I'm probably going to show up and it's just going to be overhaul. And I'm going to be out of there in like 10, 15 minutes. I'm thinking I'm going to be on scene for like 10, 15 minutes. Because we had a, on our street, we had a uh, railroad track un- that went underneath and there was a, like a pedestrian bridge. I'm walking over the bridge. I look in general direction. Keep in mind, it's four in the morning. It's pitch black outside. All I can see is just smoke filling the air. And I'm like, oh, damn, we're still going with this. Thought I was going to be there for like 10 to 15 minutes. Went up there for like four hours. Just, you know, so that was the big one was about a year ago. Um, but as far as my actual first, I couldn't even begin to even think that's all. I've been thinking of I'm I'm trying to think of that for a while, but I don't remember what my first was. But that was definitely my biggest was a year ago. So Yeah, I do recall um I think you remember Tiffany uh Tyler. Yep. And um I introduced her to the fire service to hard weight, and she introduced oh. me to cosplay um and anime um with some of the things and i remember one night two three o'clock in the morning we're leaving um one of our local hangout right off of sahara nellis the moon was not out there was not a cloud in the sky the sky was pitch black right happened to look to the north and i go and i I said get in the truck she goes i am i know now or you're staying behind so she jumped in and looked at me kind of strange, like, what? And I just started going. She goes, you pass our place. I go, no, I'm going to a fire. What fire? The header right ahead. And yeah. I, I remember, where? It's so <laughs> dark out here. I said, I don't care how pitch black it is. 
the header, the plume, will automatically print on the sky. And it's right, right there. And so I told her, look at your 1130. If you're looking at it um, straight ahead, that'd be 12 o'clock. So pretend you're in, the, you're in the clock. Look at about your 1130. You're going to see the distinct. It took her a while. And I got to, and then it was a, a, a religious um, um, building that was um, on fire off of Lamb and Cheyenne area. I got those oh, photos. Right. And as we were getting closer, she's like, wow, you could see that from way over there. And you, you're from this valley. You know, that was a good, at least good 10 miles or so driving yeah. you know, left right turn from Nellis and Sahara all the way to about Lamb and um, <laughs> Cheyenne area and I do remember Channel 8 using uh, my photos uh, uh, for their uh, for their news because there was not a media there I was able to get Channel 8 to uh, take care of that one but yeah right. I remember teaching somebody about midnight uh, fires like you say you don't see it and all of a sudden you see it by the time we got home uh, daylight was coming out <laughs> uh, we were there for for a while so now has any of your videos or photos that you have taken for any department or anybody shown an interest where it been published uh, you know either with the media uh, with the media stream a magazine newspaper i think one of we had a major accident uh where i lived in mass right out the road from my house i think uh one of no not i think it was i think i had one from a major accident by my house in massachusetts i think one made that into um one of the news stations and then one from that fire i mentioned before in the middle of the night that one made it onto the uh on one of the news as well, so a couple of. No, oh, okay, that, yeah, that, that that's good. Have they given you credit, or they just use it? Yeah, they do give credit. They're 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 good with that. So oh, okay, yeah, I remember back in the days they used to actually pay you for that. <laughs> and, but I believe Chicago Tribune started that trend when they got rid of their photographers for the newspaper. Have you ever thought of being a member of uh, a department as a volunteer or paid in any capacity? Um, not really. Not really. I'm kind of liking what I'm doing with the photography and uh, videos. But I'm, what I'm looking to do uh, eventually is get into a uh, dispatch role. That's what I'm trying to wind up. So, yeah, okay. I'm player, player dispatch somewhere. Okay. How have the departments, uh, you know, police department, fire, or any others, uh, have treated you when you're on a, on a scene? Oh, they, they were really good about it. Um, in Massachusetts, they just do not give a damn. As long as you're not, you know, impeding operations, you can get as close as you want. Here, I've found they tend to be a little bit more strict on that but not really um you know as long as you're not impeding operations you know you should be fine uh you know nobody should be really be really yelling at you but I, you know i haven't had any problems really so you know, I'm, I'm sure everybody at some point has done this before in the past too so yeah so and, no, and nothing like here in las vegas where metro will set up the yellow tape almost a mile away from the incident <laughs> right it's like it <laughs> Right. Uh, compared to Los Angeles, I mean, Los Angeles, we have the sheriffs out there. I remember doing my photography and literally they'd be like on top of the fire, that's how close they are. And they just kind of look at you because they can't go nowhere because they got that five inch hose going from the hydrant right past their car to the engine and they yep. can't go nowhere. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I know yeah, every area seems to be different when it comes to a lot of things. Now, do you belong to any organization for fire buff or your photography? 
So I am not at the moment. I'm looking to get into since we're in Bloomington now. It's not too far from Indianapolis. So I'm looking to do uh, eventually at some point do the um, Indianapolis fire buffs. So that's what I'm looking to get to at some point uh, in the future. But well, as of right now, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember back in the days joining the International Fire Photographer Association back in um, the early 80s and everything. And unfortunately, that organization no longer is around. Uh, they tried to revive it, but it didn't quite work. Now, Yeah, uh, that's a dispatch for you guys. Um, was that a dispatch for you guys? That just no, that, I just have my scanner going kind of low. I just think it was, but yeah, you, you would definitely know because this this station alerting is loud as hell, so you you'd definitely hear it if it was us. Oh, okay. Now, if somebody wants to get into this hobby, uh, what will you tell them? What will you um suggest for them to to do? How, how will they get started? So getting started, essentially, I would start out with, um, you know, like I did, just start out with, um, you know, videos from the stations and stuff. And then once you've been doing that for a couple of years, um, then I would suggest going into, you know, calls and stuff. I wouldn't suggest going to calls, you know, right away, just because you want to, you want to be able to figure out from, you know, videos and study up online about you know how close you can get without being in the way because that's a big thing is making sure you're not in the way and that's why you know it's, it can be a challenge sometimes um when you get a fire trying to be in a place where you can get a, you know good pictures and video at the same time not impeding operations as well so you, know, you need to give yourself time to um do that and study that and then look into um once you've looked into and studied on scene stuff for a while, then, you know, start showing up and, you know, but making sure again, you're out of the way. That's the big thing. But as far as where to start, I would definitely start out with just, you know, getting videos from stations and stuff. That's where I'd start. Or hmm. talking to other people that have been doing this for a while. Uh, that's another big step you could take. So. Okay. Yeah, I know we have a mutual friend, Captain Lamping. He yeah, one of the, in my opinion, one of the greatest uh, captains I have run into here in Clark County, not only uh, for his knowledge and teaching and his mentorship. I know at one of the open houses towards the end of your stay here, he actually had you do the announcement for the uh, vehicle extrication. Right. Yeah, and that was at what station? Where was that? Was it? No, it wasn't station 38, was it? Or was it station 23? It, it probably was 20 because they did a lot of them at 23, but that wasn't really near the end, though. I don't think. It might have been six. Was it 66? I don't think it was 66. It might have been, though. I don't. Well, no, nah, if you were there, it wouldn't have been 66. I don't know where it was. Yeah, because I, I remember he he had you do the announcement, and I and I thought that was uh, pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, what will be your definition of a fire buff? So my definition essentially would would be somebody who is interested in the fire service. Lovely. And there goes my engine. <laughs> but we're gonna get uh, that engine in. coming out of that station? Or is it coming from a different station? Yeah, so here in a second, they're going to be headed out of here. So we can watch. But yeah, so essentially my definition of a fire buff would be um, someone who's really interested in, in doing this. Someone who is 
you know, does photo and video is that's definitely, I feel like it's a big part of it. Um, and essentially just someone who has a real keen interest in, in doing this. So. Oh, they, have, I did, they actually switched the, okay, the engine, the engine used to be over there. Now it's over here. So I got to get the hell out of the way. See what I mean? You got to stay out of the way. You got to know what's going on around you. So that's also a big part of, you know, being above too is, Again, being someone who, um, who, who was able to be on scene without being in the way, because usually if people are on scene and they're not above, they're usually pretty much in the way. So, yeah, they're going to be taken off here in a sec. But I mean, yeah, that's the big part of it. And then uh, we're going to pull up on the questions just for a sec, because it's going to get really loud once you get those sirens going. Oh, that'd be fine. Now, that was a short blast of the uh, QR, or did you mute it? Huh? Do you mute the sound, or they just did a short um, blast of the of the cue horn? Yeah, they did the uh, they do the cue and the horn, and they also have an electronic siren they use. Yeah, because uh, we didn't hear much of the siren except for when it first started to pull out, then it went silence. Huh, that's weird. My phone has been giving me sound issues, so maybe that's what's going on. I thought that's uh. fixed. But I don't know. Oh, okay. but yeah, so. so you didn't mute. So you didn't mute it. Okay. So they switched right. it on you. So they moved the engine and the truck, huh? Well, no, because they're supposed to be. Um, so what they're doing is they're actually going to be moving a paramedic squad over here. So they're, they moved the engine over here uh, just to get it ready for the switchover because they're going to be moving a paramedic squad over here. And they had a heavy rescue truck in here. So they moved that to another station. So they're still trying to figure out what they're doing because they're switching trucks out and doing this and doing that. So it's oh, okay. So they're adding another unit to that station, but right. I like the oh, that spot. I like okay. the Dalmatian. Oh, yeah. They got a little. Uh, he's uh, he's shedding, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe, a Dalmatian here. Hey, maybe you should. Um... I said, well, they will let you sand it down and repaint it. <laughs> uh. So, yeah, so that's that's how it works out here. So, okay, yeah. Now you were for a moment there in Massachusetts when I'm in, uh, back in Gloucester, right? Now, the whole family moved to Indiana, or you just moved to Indiana? So, for the longest time, I had, um, and still do, obviously, cousins, aunts, uncles in Massachusetts. So, we moved out there, and then, I think it was um, dad's job, I think, is what did it. Um, you know, we got moved around, so we're here now, because dad knew the area here, because he actually went to... Um, we went to produce. We knew the area. And like I said, we lived in Kentucky before, so it's not too far. So that's how we wound up here. Okay. Yeah, you're not actually too far from my hometown, which is Chicago. So we have about four hours. And yeah, that's nothing. Um because uh once you hit Gary, Indiana, you're in Chicago anyway. So uh, I know a lot of I know people call Gary, Indiana, Gary, Illinois, instead of Gary, Indiana, and they call Gary Chicago. I mean, just like right there. Uh, right. I remember those days when I used to drive 18 wheels back in the 90, how things were. So, um, let's see. What will be your definition of a fireground photographer? So a fireground photographer would be someone who 
utilizes more specialized equipment, so more more camera work as opposed to you know the phones, and then also someone who has more experience with more on scene stuff as opposed to more of you know around the station. So I feel like that's more of um, the fire out photographer is a someone who uses more specialized equipment than a phone, <laughs> and two someone who's been around fire scenes for you know doing it for years especially hmm, okay now i do know before um thoughts of going back east from vegas um for a while there i know you were trying to get into the medical field like an emt and so forth i know you were trying to do that through your school, but you did accomplish one thing out here, which was the uh, Citizen Emergency Response Team, CERT. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the Community Emergency Response Team, or CERT. Yeah, so I did that. I got that in November of 17. Took that class over at uh, Station 82 in Henderson, so I got that done. Okay. Now, does that transfer over to where you're at or where you're located right now? I have no idea what that is. Which one? <laughs> I, th I think they I think they did it here in the past. And I know the register of the, the registry of people who have completed is, is national. But I don't know if that actually transfers over to us. Um, I know, you know, like I said, it's a national program. So everywhere, everywhere has it. Um, and I think it was pretty active at one point here and then it you know, slowly died, I guess. Um, but they might still use it. I don't know. Um, so. Okay, so you haven't looked into it then since you've been I there. No, I haven't looked into it that much, but I definitely will have to be not even bring it up. <laughs> oh, well, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, man, that is, yeah. No. For those out there that have heard about it but don't know about it, you know, or those that are going to be watching this video if they see it on YouTube or listen to it, what exactly is CERT? So it's the um, stands for Community Emergency Response Team, and essentially what that is is when you have like a major incident, like a you know, hurricane, massive tornado, something like that. You know, these guys are going to be stretched pretty thin. Um, so essentially, the community emergency response team can do, um, you know, we're trained in light search and rescue, um, first aid, extinguishing small fires, you know, stuff like that. You know, the minor stuff that you can handle, with, you know, with proper training, it doesn't require, you know, a whole company to respond. So essentially, after an incident, the CERT team will meet up and they'll go, okay, this is where I, you know, if they'll have an commander, they'll be like, okay, this is where I want you, this is where you need to be. And they'll do like small fires or, you know, light search and rescue, stuff like that, that could be completed uh, prior to first responders showing up. Uh, because after a major incident, you know, you're going to be stretched pretty thin. So, essentially, it's just, some, I guess, technical rescue training more is what it is, uh, you know, light search and rescue, small firefighting with like extinguishers, uh, first aid, so all kinds of stuff. So basically to keep uh, your neighborhood safe, you know, prior to the arrival of uh, emergency personnel. Okay, so basically a more advanced uh, neighborhood watch uh, type program. Right. Instead, right. of having, instead of having somebody looking through the blinds, you got somebody actually going out there and going, yo, stop, you can't go there, that's dangerous. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, it's not more of like a police type thing. It's more of like, I guess, first response, like kind of like a mini first responder, I guess, kind of like someone who is, is able to help people out. It's, you know, it's not necessarily like policing and stuff, but um, I, I mean, I guess you could if, because they're gonna, yeah, the police are gonna be stretched in too. So I mean, I guess you could, but they were geared more towards um, the majority of it. Honestly, was light search and rescue. That was what they did, we did a lot of time on. So okay. 
All right. Now, yeah, that's about you know, most of the questions I can think of that I wrote down. Everything else is hey, I live from this point on. Um, do they have fire police in your area? They do not. So I mean, actually, like, I've heard of it, but I'm not. Honestly, I don't even know. I think I think I have a general idea what that is. We don't have any. I think that's more of like um, we didn't even have in Massachusetts. I think that was more of like a New Jersey, maybe Pennsylvania. As far as like the, the title of fire police, I think that's more of like. Literally, Pennsylvania and New Jersey are all I can think of right now. I don't think anywhere else really has fire police. Some mm, in New yeah. York, I think, actually do. I'm not New York, but... Yeah, yeah. I, know to, I know some of the um, states uh, east of the Rockies will have it, uh, especially uh, those closer to the east, uh, eastern coast um, that, will have, that will have some of it. But you never right. know who has what in their area now in bloomington where you're at right now right how many stations they have so we're separated into we have our city and then we have our county and then we have like one or two other um i guess side departments so the city has five and then the county is up to i think because they just had like this huge merger take place they have like you just have like six or seven departments and they merged a bunch of them. I think the county now has seven, seven. And then my home department, my local department has two. And then uh, another area has one. So I think for the entire county, we were on seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 15 stations, somewhere around 15 stations for the entire county. So for the city itself, uh, it's five. Okay. Now, Compared to Vegas, to where you're at, what town would that be closest to? You know, like uh, Boulder City, Henderson, North Town. Oh, um, like as far as like as far Lincoln as the size. Hill. <laughs> as far as the size, are you saying? Yeah, size and the geographic um, and demographic of the uh, city you're you're at right now. I mean. Yeah, I would say size-wise for the city of Livingston, probably around the size of um, probably North Las Vegas. Um, I think North Las Vegas currently runs five or six stations. It's about the same year, honestly. So about, about North Las Vegas is about right. Okay. A lot of rural or is it more um, urban? Well, the city is more urban, but then once you get like out into like, the county areas, that's where it gets more more ruralized. Uh, my area where I live is about half and half. So once you're actually in the city, it's it's definitely more of an urban feel. Um, but I got the entire um, the entire downtown around me right now. So and then once you see up there, you have the more um, more higher more high rise type buildings. You know, once you get down to that part of downtown. But the part where our station is, it's you know kind of between two districts, so it's got a little bit of a downtown feel to it, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, a little bit more of a downtown feel without the traffic like we have here. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, okay. That that that's pretty cool. So. I'm just curious. I know you're uh, you're doing this from the station, and I understand why. And I've seen some of your postings on uh, social media, where that seems to be your go-to station. Do guys at that station know you're there, or they talk to you, or they just kind of look at you like, "What is he doing?" Uh, we, we talk every once in a while. So the reason I'm here a lot is because my mom actually works right up the street. So it makes it easy for me to get out and about and do what I like to do, you know, while, while she's, because she loves her job. So she's doing what she likes to do and I'm doing what I like to do. So that's why I'm, that's why I'm here pretty much every weekday, pretty much. <laughs> so that's why this is mainly my go-to station. That's that's why. Mm. 
And no problem, no problem. Figure I asked that one question. Now, if anybody wants to get a hold of you or uh, follow you on social media, where can they find you? So I have um, Instagram, which is my brain ain't working. Uh, Firebuff eighty one, all one word. Uh, F I R E B U F F eight one, all one word. That's me. And then uh, my main um, platform that I use, especially my videos, is on my YouTube, which is again all one word. Capital F for fire, capital R for rescue, capital V for videos. So I have I do fire rescue videos. That's where I have all my YouTube stuff at. So that's where I have that, and then that's pretty much all I use as far as you know this stuff goes. Yeah. Now I do know on your Instagram, I got tag on it. And the other person that I'm going to be interviewing for this, um, because uh, like I said on my email when I sent it to you, uh, there were three people that I was thinking about. And you were one of them. And uh, I was um, emailing back and forth uh, this morning, early this morning. Um, since I got off at three o'clock, that would be six o'clock your time. You're on East, yep. time, right? Yeah, I'm on Pacific, and I'm already e- e- emailing with a two-hour difference because they're in the Midwest. Okay. And uh, you were saying something on your social media, well, your Instagram, about the IGTV, and I'm looking at Dan. I sent him a message. I go, this is going to be interesting. First interview I'm doing, don't know what I'm doing, and we're going to be live on IGTV. How you do IGTV? I just know you too. <laughs> and they were no, right back. No. I have no idea. No, it's, it's not literal TV. It's um, the Instagram. Is, I think it literally stands for Instagram TV. So what you'll find is, especially if like you have more than one or a video more than one minute long, it'll tell you. It'll say you can put lots like a minute to your page and then put the rest on your uh, IGTV. So basically it's for like for like longer videos. Uh, it can be so like I'm short, one minute. Are we live on that right now? No, no, no. So I'm actually uh, screen recording this. So this, this is screen recorded. And then around noon, I'm going to put it up on the IGTV. So. Okay, yeah, because I know I'm going to be doing some t- touch up on, on my end before I put it up on my channel. I was just kind of curious. Uh, it doesn't bother me. I'm just like, okay, I'm going to be an IGTV. What's IGTV? <laughs> so I'm like, right. All right. Of course, it's like Facebook you, Watch. Yeah, I figured that was payback for what I said. You say, okay, here's the date and times. And you thought, what did I got myself into? Because I gave right. you uh, two months worth of information, <laughs> right? And you were and even, and even too. I got confused because you said, "Well, I got to see," because you said, "Well, I got to see it." I'm doing it as far as an apartment. I'm like, "What does the entire department have to do with this?" <laughs> we're talking thirty stations, a whole admin staff. What are we doing? Yeah, yeah, you got that one right because the county did uh, open up a new station, which I have not been to yet. Uh, or driven by it, and yet it's part of my patrol area from my regular job. I believe it's off of Robindale between Buffalo and Durango. Uh, they got, down, down they in got that the built, area. They got that one built and opened already? Uh, yeah, I believe it's Station 30 that they opened up, I believe. Don't quote Wow. Me. I know they were trying to get that opened up and get it built. I, don't, I didn't think it was off the ground by the time I got there, so yeah. Yeah. Well, I wasn't even aware of it till another fire buff uh, happened to mention it on his um, Instagram, and I'm like, "Huh?" Because he yeah, he, I gotta... he contacted me asking me where it was going to be located, and I'm going, "What?" And when he told me Station Thirty, I'm like, "Oh, we got another station going up." <laughs> So, but here's the thing: I see, I see, I see, I see pictures of, of it. The doors are great, and they're like station um, sixteen. Okay. On the bay doors, they don't go up. They open. Well, they look like they're the one to open off to the side, like station sixteen, which I think is better than the doors going straight up. Yeah. 
in my in my personal opinion, especially since we're so close to California and we do have several faults in uh, in Nevada. That uh, yeah, I'd rather be able to try and push something to the side and try and lift something that might be off track. Right. If the if an earthquake hit or something. So. Yeah. So how long do you spend over at the station when you go to the station to do your buffing? So like on, on days like today when I'm at work with mom, usually I'm here for from little about around nine to five, usually at the year when I'm here on the week on some of the weekdays as long as it's not raining and then when I'm just out doing whatever, usually around an hour or so. If we have no uh, special events going on, usually about an hour. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, uh, what does it seem they run the most out there? Uh, anything like out here it seems to be a higher call medical than on traffic accidents or fires? So uh, here we run, I, see, I feel like it's a lot more of um, traffic accidents, firearms, stuff like that, just because we don't run. So we only run uh, here at the fire department, the, um, the higher uh, level medical calls so we don't run like you know if you've fallen break your ankle that's more of an em you know that's you're not going to need sick people on scene for that so they're going to have just ems go and then if it's more of a serious ems call they'll then they'll send uh fire that's what that one was too was uh, that was ems uh, higher priority medical um but generally speaking i think more of it's like alarm activations is a lot of it uh, just because we don't run most medicals uh, unless they're you know, more serious so definitely more fire alarms I, I feel like than anything else mm, okay so you said something about uh, six so uh, how, how many um, personnel do they run on on an engine so so it's four on an engine and the EMS uh, they run two so like I, like I was saying if you fall and break your ankle and they were to send everybody on that. That'd be six people on scene for a broken ankle. Like that's not really ideal. Okay, so they, assist, in which case okay, so they run a four man crew uh, on their engine. Right. So on the engine and the truck, we run four. Okay. Yeah, because I know some places run six, some run five, some run two, some run three. On the engine, it all it all depends on their area, budget, and everything else that's involved, right. uh, depending on the department. So uh, unlike New York City, uh, FDNY, I think they just pack, uh, say, okay, how many can we fit into the apparatus? And they run that way. I mean, it seems to be a pretty good department. Um, I've seen some of their videos. They they kill it with manpower, for what I right. I mean, I've heard a, uh, a running joke where all they need is get everybody on one side of a building, pick it up, and shake it out, and the fire will be out. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, but yeah. No, I know out here in Vegas for September 11th, um, they will do the silence, ring a toll, uh, ring the bells, and so forth. Uh, you have any idea what they might do there in Bloomington at all? So uh, this year, because of or last year because of COVID, it was more of a private thing. But they they do uh, they have a public safety training complex. They went out there and. Uh, Rings and bells and all that. So they, they did do that, and they they do that um, at the training center. So they do a lot of it there. So, um, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I know this year the twentieth anniversary of the towers going down. Um, I know I'm. I would like to go there. I'm still trying to figure it out if I'm going to be able to make it to uh, New York for it or not. But at the seems right now, 
it might not be possible for me to uh, head down All right. uh, to New York to it. So I know that they're backing up into the station. They don't have a pull through station then, huh? They don't have a. So they have this station with the station set up. They do. So they have. Um, they have pull throughs on the because there's three bays. So they have the pull through through the the one at the very end, and then the second one, and then this one they know. So they because right. when they're over there, they're able to go back in and pull you know pull through. The truck, however, cannot actually pull through because they have the uh, battalion chief behind them. So they actually can't pull like they could. The battalion chief wasn't there, but they can't really pull through because they. The last thing I do was smash into a chief's car. So. Oh, okay. they get so, so basically, the uh, battalion chief uh, uh, vehicle uh, sits behind the apparatuses. Then, so it sits behind the the uh, ladder truck. Yeah, let me actually get over here because I can actually show you because it's um, there's actually a small apartment complex back here, and you can actually see it. Um, it's you can actually see where the uh, where the drive through bays are. So they are. So you can see where the uh, where the engine used to be and where the truck is. You can see the two there. And then the engine was right is right here. So oh. they have a brick wall. So yeah, I'm surprised they don't put the rescue in that spot and keep the engine on the other side uh, for safety purposes uh, to do the pull through. <laughs> yeah, well they the engine pulled through for the longest time because they were in the other bay, but the heavy re rescue truck took that bay from them. So. Okay. Now that town looked like uh, it'll roll up its uh, sidewalks around 6 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> so. Now the um, quarters for the um, personnel is on the opposite side of the building, I'm assuming. So the uh, crew quarters, so they have uh, three floors. So the first floor is the, well, they have a basement, which is their gym. Then they have the main floor, which is, you know, mainly just the apparatus bay and a bathroom, essentially. And then the second floor is the uh, chief's offices, battalion chief, all of them. Have all the admin offices on the second floor. And then the kitchen and day room and all that's actually right up there. Oh, okay. Yeah, they were, that's probably why they put the rescue over there closer to the quarters to they can hop in quicker. Oh, yeah, we don't use the rescue truck that much either. So the engine and the truck take everything around here. So because the rescue is literally a heavy, it's not, you know, it's not like you know, like you know, rescue eleven, like rescue eleven is. It's literally a heavy rescue truck. So so it's cross. It's actually cross staff. So we don't actually have a staff. So we, it's like Air Resource fourteen. The rescue fourteen crew staff that. Truck crew stabs the heavy rescue truck if you need it. So, doesn't really get that much. The heavy rescue doesn't really go out that much anyway. So, yeah, okay. Hey, that, that's cool. Now, are you finally driving? I know when you were out here in Vegas, you weren't driving, but you had right. the uh, bus system um, down pat. <laughs> yeah, so. That's something I'm working on. Should be hopefully around June. Hopefully I'll get my license and I'll be out more and getting more stuff. So Okay. Yeah, the only reason why I'm asking because I know you're at the station and uh the few views that you have shown of the downtown area and so forth. I really have not seen a vehicle except for that one Toyota FJ. When the engine was coming out, I was on there pulling up to the stop sign, but I haven't seen any motor vehicle or heard any motor vehicle going by. So it's, it seems like nobody out and about. Yeah, there's some that go by. Like you have this bus right here, you have an SUV behind that. Uh, this road can get busy, but for the most part, it's, it's kind of like this where you have you know, two or three cars at a time. This is a one way, so they can only go this way and then. So, 
the street can get busy, but for the most part, it's like this, pretty dead. It makes it easy for the crews anyway. Not having to fight traffic, which is good. So now here's going to go to something that be um maybe different for you. Now out here in Vegas, you know we got the lightweight construction, stucco building, and so forth. What kind of buildings do you guys have out there? Uh, mostly, um, I'm not sure what the uh, in the, the actually like inside the walls and stuff are, but I know a lot of it is uh, more brick. Uh, use mainly brick construction, especially on the downtown area. Um, so we use a lot of brick. This one's more like rough brick, and then there's buildings like uh, that one over there. That's more like smoother brick. So a lot of the downtown area is more brick. And then you can see over there, actually, we have a wood frame right there. So a little bit of everything, I guess. Limestone at the, that's actually the um, the police station. They use limestone, so. Oh, that's a police station? Right, so that's the police station right there, yeah. No, oh, okay. They're really not that far from one another. Right. But that's a police station. We have our fire headquarters, and then dispatch is actually in the top of that building right there, in the middle there. Oh, okay. So what would that uh, building be over there? Uh, just a government building and that, for that whole entire so thing at dispatch? So they, the way they do it here is really weird. So the first floor is the, uh, the bus station. And then they have a, a spot in the, uh, in the back, or like around there for the buses. And then the second, if you go into the bus station, there's an elevator with a, um, with a key card reader. That takes you right up to dispatch. I don't know why they put a, a dispatch over a bus station, but they did, so. Uh, probably because they might be using part of their uh, the um, bus station uh, communication system using their uh, antenna and so forth. Yeah, that could be. And that, that'd be something for you to explore as one of your projects to see if you can um, do one of your um, virtual tours of a uh, location like you have done before. Yeah. Of course, we all got to wait and see what takes place for 2021, since 2020 was a curveball for all of us. Right. Or the majority of us. Uh, I was fortunate due to my line of work and being a volunteer with the county and the fire service. I really didn't get affected by the COVID. I was a quote unquote essential. <laughs> So, I, I was uh, always out on the road. Yeah. Yeah, so. I mean, uh, I know from some of my relatives that I have in Illinois, uh, some of them are still slightly on the quarantine side. And uh, they're not too happy, but it's understandable. Right. So, anybody can find you on Instagram at firebuff81, all one word, or at yes. YouTube, fire rescue video. All one word, yep. Now, I know for a while there, you said something about uh, turning off your, your comments um, on your social media. Um, was that on your Instagram or on your YouTube? My, um, what was it? Uh, the comments. Uh, I know you said something a while back that you were going to be turning off the, uh, the oh. comments. Yeah, I turned those back on. I was having some issues with some people, so I had to shut them off for a while, let them get whatever issues they had out of their system, so everything's back on now, and everything's as it was before, so... 
Okay. So have you come up with a um, design logo for, um, for your own teacher, for other department and personnel to identify who you are as the uh, fire rescue video guy, or you haven't even thought about going that far ahead in now? Uh, Oh. Yeah, I'm not really going that far. So maybe down the road, but for right now, we're just keeping everything kind of as is. All right. So when you think you might be heading back to um, Vegas? So I'm hoping June or July. Um, I've been kind of keeping in touch with uh, Kelly a little bit, trying to figure out if they're going to have open houses in June. And I guess she's signed back still trying to figure out, you know, if that's going to happen or not. Um, maybe June, and if, if we're not having an open house, then probably in July, uh, I'm hoping. Uh, but we'll, we'll see what happens, though. Yeah, okay. Okay, that, that's cool. Uh, at least you're still in contact with with some of the folks at HQ. Yep. Because uh, I, I know I'm in the blind, but they have my number and we do communicate and they know all they have to do is just um, make a call and um, activate me type thing, as I will put it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because I'm currently detailed at Station 79 uh, doing coverage over there, so oh, okay. I, haven't been, I haven't been at my st assigned station uh, for a while. So, gotcha. And it's until further notice. <laughs> the way I look at it. All right. Yeah. So. All right. So we got that cover. We got that cover. Look like you got a beautiful day. I don't know what our temperature is supposed to be uh, out here. I think we hit 90s yesterday, I think. Uh, yeah, we're, look, we're looking at 75 here today, so. Uh, that's not bad. That's not bad. At least there's no white stuff on the ground. That's a good thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, this winter kind of dumped snow all over us, but, you know, I've, since about the end of February, it's been pretty nice. So, yeah, yeah. Well, what you might be missing over here. Well, let me see if I can pull up the weather thing on my phone. We're just acting up. Yeah, yeah so calling for the high of eighty-seven. Currently at 64 with a low of 62. So okay. we'll see what takes place uh, um, in the next couple days. I know it's going to be my luck since I'll be going to the station next week um, to do my station duty. It's probably going to snow. Yeah, just, yeah. Just, just get the snow on me. Yeah. So. And we lost you. All right. Uh, give me one second. I just totally screwed this up. Hold up. Oh, okay. You're still there. Uh, just that you're there. We go. Yeah, my phone got jacked. Okay, we're all set. Okay, there we go. There we go. All right. All right. Well, Matt, um, if you have anything else to share or any advice to give anybody, hey, that 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 sounds good. On that, I think uh, we have hit our our basic questions that uh that came up with, and then some. I mean, uh, just kind of miss seeing you around um, yeah. out here. Of course, uh, even if you would have been out here, it'd still be kind of hard to run into each other due to the fact that uh, we have what what you call it. Um, a lot of the stations are still um, shut down. Right. They're not really open, open. Uh, yeah. To the public. 
Um, and I think that's going to be that way for at least a good while. Probably. Yeah, let's see. 2016. What do I have in 2016? Hold on a second. Do I have anything that might be of interest? And you know what I'm doing if you know me very well. You know I'm up to no good already. Um, Oh, no, give me cheese there. And it, it did just cross my mind. I don't know why, but it just did. And I'm looking for it. I'm having a hard time finding it. Um, you know, it always one of those that earlier I couldn't find it. And I'm like, where? It could have been the one photo of you, I, and your mom over at Maya Science Station uh, in Blue Diamond. Oh, that Station one, yeah. 80. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking for that one. I gave the CDs to uh, Kelly, so she has it. So I don't, I don't even have the, um, um, the photos of where you have the nozzle at one of the open houses. Um, uh, when we went to an open house. Now, what kind of bird was that? Oh, I have no clue. Yeah, that is you. I got my window open, so I'm going, wait a minute. That sounds like you're coming out of my window, but we have no birds in my area. Because <laughs> uh, you have some weird sounding birds here, too, so I don't know. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, that, that's you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, I always was good for candid stuff. And let's see, which station would this be? This would be. That was funny. I got the photo, but I never did recall being at that station. Where uh, where was that? Uh, I got uh, Rescue 20 showing and Engine 30, 31 showing. Yeah, I don't think you were at that one. I must have been my photo, because I remember I took... Was the time we in that big, uh, picture? Oh, yeah, it is one of those that... Uh, actually, yes, I was there. And the reason why I know I was there is because it's one of these that I have here where... Oh, I think the, I'm pretty sure that was at 31. Yeah, well, I noted the, the it said engine 31. So, yeah, there you are. Cell phone on hand. Probably, uh, probably both. Point media going. Yeah. And that was in that, there, they were just setting up for the open house because uh, you don't see any of the right. food or anything line up there um, right yeah so yeah I, kn I knew i would find uh at least a photo of you uh, and to figure it, uh, it'd be the one that you'd be walking by there like i'd say i don't have uh i can't find the one of um, 
you over at my station at 80, nor can I find um, the one with you holding the nozzle. That was at, uh, the nozzle was at 28. Oh, no, no, that was, I think it was, I think it took two of those. I think one was at 28, one was at 24. I think. I know there was one of me at 24 with one. Yeah. And I think you get one of me at 28, too. Yeah, because I don't think you went to um 38 at all, did you? I, I did do a couple of the ones at 38, so I was at 38 uh, a couple of times. Okay. Yeah, because our favorite captain, um, he's now at um, 38. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I get the uh, change of scenery. <laughs> uh, hey, believe me, I'd be, <laughs> I'd have drafted out of 11 probably sooner than that. How busy they are over there. Uh, I'd have left 11 and gone to like 66 or something, 87, somewhere down there where it's just nice and chill. Yeah. Uh, no. Oh, there's my station, but not with you. Okay. Yeah, like, like I say, one of those that it just never seems to be uh, popping up half the time when I'm looking for it. And for our listeners, they're probably going, okay, your station, your station. And I keep mentioning it. Um, the good old Station 80, Clark County Fire Station 80, uh, out in Blue Diamond. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Now, over here, if you follow my cursor, that one 1941 or 1942 GMC fire truck is no longer at the station. Um, uh, it got, uh, picked up by one of the, uh, fire chiefs. I believe they're restoring it. And, uh, our type one engine no longer there. We're down to a type two. And that was a picture you, you and I are in where the type two is behind us. That's a good old water tender there. And we still have the red squad. We haven't lost it yet, but, uh, we might be losing that one. Of course, they've been saying that since 2014, but it might be closer now where we might be getting upgraded. But yeah. Gotcha. So there, there's a little bit of home for you so you can feel homesick. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, well, Matt, it was um, great talking to you and seeing you. Thanks. It's been such a long time since we've seen each other. Yep. Um, you coming out here? Hey, you got my numbers. Uh, go ahead and contact me. Let me know. We'll see if we can get together. Uh, right. You can tell mom I've been behaving. Of course, okay. of course that she get to see this once we post it. Uh, she will hear that herself. Now, I am recording this once I finish recording it. Um, doing the little touch, I will be putting it up on my YouTube channel. Um, I could probably find a way to send you a link of this recording before you know, me doing anything, unless you're recording it on your end, right? On my end, too. So, yeah, so. If you want to go ahead and put it up on IGTV, no, no problem. Just um, make sure it goes to the um, Justice Ch uh, channel or a court TV channel, you know. Uh, my face might be wanted out there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, after all, where do they find all the fugitives? For some odd reason, they all like coming to Vegas. <laughs> 
<laughs> it seemed like America most wanted always end up out. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, Matt, you be safe. Uh, hey. Don't get run over by the engine since they moved it on you. <laughs> now that I know it won't happen, I was like, why are they all going this way? I was like, what are they doing? The engine's over there. Oh, no, it ain't. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. Now, one last question. Yeah. For some of us uh, in the service, some of us are buff and so forth. As you can see behind me, some of my little collection that I have, and that's just a very small fortune. The rest is over here on this side, and I mailed a whole box to my uh, nephew back to uh, Chicago, who caused my sister to call me and ask me if I rob a Toyota Rust store. <laughs> I didn't have to pack it with foam, it was that pack. <laughs> Um, the departments over there uh, wear um, patches of different designs or generic type patches on their uniform and so forth. So I'm pretty sure they all have the uh, same patches. I don't think they have any, you know, company based ones. I think they all have just the same uh, generic uh, city fire patch. Um, I haven't really been paying that much attention to the patches, so I wouldn't know, but um, I think they all use the same City of Bloomington Fire uh, patches, so. Oh, okay. And there's no uh, uh, special foundation or organization that they support or uh, you give a shout out to or anything. I'm, uh, I mean, like here in Vegas, we got the uh, the Birds uh, Foundation, and uh, I mean, you you remember we're, we're active with a lot of uh, co-sponsors uh, for out, right. out here. Yeah, here I'm here in Bloomington, um, not so much. Down in um, Southern Indiana and where I live in Kentucky, they all get together every June. Um, the first, I think it's the last couple weeks of May, and then the first. The first Sunday in June, they do the big shebang, but it's um, the uh, one of the news stations puts on the uh, the Crusade for Children, and they collect. Uh, they used to do I don't know how they're doing it this year, but they used to do uh, door to door. They did roadblocks, uh, collecting money for um, for uh, uh, sick children. So they do that, um, and then every and then every. I think it's the first Sunday in June this year. Anyway, they go down to the uh, the studio, the new studio, and they all donate. It, it's been they've gotten a lot these past few years. I think last year was like five million exact, somewhere around there. So, but they've got their own, their own area. They do that in. So, okay, okay. Now, are you gonna try and make it to FDIC since uh is going to be on your neck of the woods this year? Yeah, it's only an hour away. It's uh, the beginning of August. It's, they changed that. It was supposed to be the end of August. They changed it to the beginning. So as long as I have a license by then, which I'm sure I will, I'll be there. So, um, Actually, let's see. Um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was supposed to be the 19th of the 24th. They changed it to the 2nd to the 7th, I think it was. I don't know they changed it. On their Facebook, it said they did. Yeah, let's see. That will be fire engineering. Yeah, that's one of the podcasts that I listen to. Uh, fire Rescue One, uh, Fire Engineering uh, uh, podcast. Um, also, one that you probably get a kick out of. They do it on YouTube Mondays and Thursdays. They do interview, they do uh, history uh, on some of the big events and history on some of the fire station. And it's um, closer to your time than mine. It'd be 7 p.m. Eastern, um, Getting Salty uh, okay. podcast. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, I support them. This is uh, one of their mugs that uh, okay. I got for them. From Getting Salty Experiences, the uh, name of the podcast, and they're FDNY. Okay. 
Um, but it's one of those that uh, they, they have interviewed people from the UK also. Oh, wow. Yeah, FDA, okay. Yeah, they did officially move it to um, August 2nd through the 7th, 2001 yeah. in Indianapolis, Indiana. And uh, you say it's about an hour away from you? Yep. Yeah, so, yeah, you're going to be right on top of it if you can get yeah. there uh, and so forth. But, yeah. So, uh, that's a good thing right there. Like I say, it's in your neck of the woods. <laughs> yep. So, well, until the next time we run into each other, Matt, uh, I think we have come towards an end here. Um, if I manage to go visit the family back home in um, Chicago, depending on what takes place, I'll let you know because you're not that far from um, Chicago. Right. And um, when you come out this way, hey, contact me and uh, we see we get get together and so forth. That sounds good. All right. Hey, thanks, Matt, for um, joining me on this crazy adventure of doing this. Because everybody talks about fire service, but they seem to forget some of the enthusiastic um, hobbyists out there. And some right. of them have become um, made it a career out of doing their fire photography um, doing the fire buffing and being part of the fire service and back and forth. So, hey, thanks again. You be safe. And hey. until the next adventure. All right. I'm good. All right. We're out.